Welcome back. So right now we have some data and uh, there's one huge thing that we're missing in our setup right here and that is when I get a list of products I would really like to get the ID as well. Now the way that things are set up inside Firebase is the ID is actually the root name of my product. So let's try and jump into Firebase right here just to show you my problem. Notice this is actually the unique ID for a product but it's not a field right it's not something that's out here it's actually a main metadata field right here that I can I need to get from Firebase somehow to kind of get that ID into my data set. Now the reason I want it is because it of course makes sense that my model knows what the ID is. If I later want to go to details for a specific product then I would need the ID for that product right. So I need the ID somehow. I need to figure out how to get that. Uh, and then luckily if we go back to Angle of Fire 2 and we just kind of jump um, into the page that's about collections. So I'll just scroll down. The first step is to use documents. That's not what I'm looking for. I'll scroll further down. The second step is collections in Angular Firestore. Now here they actually have an explanation about different ways of working with the collections. Uh, so let's just scroll down a little bit. Here are the different ways to stream data. The one we're using right now is the value changes. Let's just read what that actually does for us. The value changes, um, the current state of your collection returns an observable of data as a synchronized array of objects, JSON objects, all snapshot metadata is stripped. Pretty much mean that you'll only get the data inside the objects. So you'll only get whatever is in here. You won't know anything about this metadata out here. Okay, so that kind of means that with this setup we have right now, I'm not getting the IDs. They're not there anywhere. But I do have a choice. I could start saving the IDs here as well, which is done in older solutions, but I wouldn't encourage it. There's a better way to do it. So let's try and jump back because that's not what we wanted in this case. We need the IDs, right? So if I scroll further down, there's another way called snapshot changes. Now that gives you the current state of your collection and returns an observable of data as synchronous array of document change action. When you need a list of data but also want to keep around metadata. That's what we want to do. Now if you scroll further down, they actually have an example here where they're using pipes and they're using maps to take data that you kind of get through this setup uh, where it has metadata and you actually can get the ID from the payload and you can also get the data so now we can start creating an object that makes sense to us because now we can start converting and actually getting the ID for each of our products. So we can later on use that ID to go and get details about the product if we want to or go and get some other metadata about the project maybe even from another collection. Okay, that's pretty amazing. So let's try and run this. Let's try and see if we can do something similar to what they have right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back to Firebase. The first thing I want to figure out is, is there an ID right now? So what I'll do is I'll jump into HTML and instead of showing the product time, I'll show the product ID because that is actually a valid field. Now if I go back and actually see the running application, you'll notice that there's nothing there of course because the, the ID isn't available. Why? Well because last lesson what we did was we mapped the data and everything we're returning is actually only the name of the product, so no ID at all. Makes sense, right? Now just to show that the ID could actually be there, I'll just add a, a bogus ID right here, just saying like this, and then you'll notice that now the ID will pop up for all the different um, products, right? But the ID will of course be the same, so still not the right data we're getting back. Now what did we have to do if we wanted to start using this guy? Let's try and jump into the code again. You needed to use something called snapshot changes. Let's try and do that. So jumping into my service and instead of calling value changes, I'll use snapshot changes. Snapshot changes. It seems we're doing the exact same thing right here, but what we're getting back now is actually not products. It's not a list of, it's not an array anymore. We're getting back something different. It is an array, but it's not an array of, of products, if that makes sense. What are we actually getting back? Well, it seems we are getting back um, some kind of action set, right? It's going to return a document change action. It contains a lot of information about what happened with each change, and then we can get a lot of data from this. So let's try and, and use that. So instead of mapping into, like we did before, a list of products, we're going to map into actions. Let's try and see what that's all about. So I'll just change this into actions. Let's actually just get rid of this for now. Whoops. I'll add actions here instead, right? Now the actions is also going to be put down here and then we're going to get back a single action for each of um, our products, right? Now with an action, what can we do with an action? An action contains a payload, 
Okay, and a payload contains a document, and a document contains some data. What? Yes. So what I'll do is I'll take the data in the payload. Let's just try and copy this. I'll take the data in the payload and save it locally. So let's just get rid of this for now and take the data from the payload. I'll call it action, convert it into a product. There we go. So now we've taken the data and converted it into a project, a product, and then we'll return that data. There we go. So now we're actually back to what we had before. The only problem is that the data right now will also contain time again. I didn't want that. I didn't want time. So instead of doing that, what I'll do is I'll still return down here instead of data, I'll return a new object. For now, I'll give it a name. That would be data.name, right? And then I want the ID. But the ID, I need to get that somewhere else in this action set. Let's try and jump back to the code. I need to say a payload doc and ID to get the ID. So let's try and do that. Jumping back here and I'll say the ID will be um, action.payload.doc, right? And again, notice you have, of course, auto completion to help you out uh, making this work. Uh, I need, of course, to say .id because it's not the doc I want, it's the ID. So here we go. Now we actually have um, a new JavaScript object that only contains the name and the ID. And yes, of course, we're sending more data now then if you don't need the ID, it doesn't make sense to do this because I don't need all this data. I don't need the metadata. I only need, if you only need the product itself, this makes no sense. But if you need to kind of get the ID in the product as well, this makes perfect sense. So if you jump back here now, you'll see now the ID is actually available. The unique IDs are actually now available on our products. So I can start using those for whatever I wanna use it for later. It could be uh, going into more details for a specific component. It could be diving uh, into other collections to search for this specific ID or whatever I want to do. So that's it for this lesson and now we've actually tried using another way of getting the data with the snapshot changes and again you can go in and read about what the snapshot changes are all about. So that's it for this lesson, see you next time, have fun.